Hey guys, back with part two of the video. Briefly, I just want to say that I use a, I think an HP LaserJet printer. Definitely research LaserJet printers out there. That's what you need to use. Um, the decal you'll see in this video, I have already cut out, so it's ready to go. Um, other than that, it's really important to just practice and take your time on these. Um, you're only limited by your imagination and artistic ability. But other than that, it's a pretty simple process to do. Uh, once you get the hang of the basics of it, you can just branch out and do a ton of different custom decals. It works really well. They're semi-permanent. You can still kind of get them off with the scotch pad. But other than that, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a good technique and it's cheap to do. So uh, enjoy the videos. Like and comment. Let me know how it's going if you have any questions. Other than that, cheers. Okay, guys, welcome back. Um, if you watched the first part of my decal tutorial, hopefully you're able to follow how I make the decals. That's basically the hardest part of the whole process. So next up is actually putting the decal on whatever you're trying to, uh, to customize. So I use two things. I use a Mod Podge and I also use, and this is the most important product, matte gel. I use a matte um, color. You can get it in gloss as well. But this is basically the most important component of the decal other than the decal itself. Um, this is an old scrapbooking technique that a lot of people use. They use this product. It's basically used by painters to seal up paintings after they're done. The Mod Podge is used when you get your decal all done to give it like a double seal. So definitely get these two products, Matte Gel and Mod Podge. You can get Mod Podge on like Walmart. You can get matte gel off Amazon or Hobby Lobby. So if you have your decal printed from my tutorial, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about here. This is a, a decal printed on the uh, label sheet, reverse printed. So if you take it and flip it around, you can see it's the correct font. Caution flammable GI Joe Adventure Team. That's a mess up. So, but it says uh, caution flammable GI Joe Adventure Team all purpose fuel. This is what I'm going to mount it on. It's a fuel drum that I just finished up. I'm just going to make a standard all purpose fuel drum. I'm kind of just doing this for this decal demonstration. So, First off, take the matte gel, and I like to go ahead and just get a generous amount of matte gel and cover cover the area. Oops, sorry. Cover the area I'm gonna decal. So I'm gonna decal all through here. You don't want to get it real thick because it can kind of make your decal look kind of crappy. But just get it there nice and smooth. It doesn't matter where all you put it because it dries clear and flat anyway. So that's done. And then I also take the decal portion and I spread the matte gel. On it as well so I'll coat the whole decal with the matte gel now I've taken the decal and obviously cut it out so I mean it doesn't take a genius to know that I kind of cut the decal to shape so then 
we have our decal coated and we've got our fuel drum and then I just marry the two together kind of try to eyeball center it up and I take my brush and I just kind of smooth it all out now also get it all smoothed out like that Pretty good. Okay. Hold on a second. So, I also usually take a, uh, a wet rag or something and wipe it across here, but we'll see how it does. Out the wet rag. So let me go ahead and you can wash the brush out with water. And uh, what we'll do is we'll let this sit for about, sometimes I let them sit for several hours. We'll just let this go ahead and sit for around 24 hours. You don't have to let it sit that long, but I'm just going to because I got some other stuff to do. So uh, we'll take a pause and then we'll come back. And I'll show you how to remove the decal, and hopefully it all goes according to plan. Okay, guys. <clears throat> so, we've let our uh, decal sit for a while. And the next step that I like to do is to uh, get like a wet sock or a rag and just vigorously wet the decal up. So get it nice and really wet because that makes the removal process a lot easier I find so make sure it's really wet and get you a little razor knife and start to peel your decal now this is a process that takes time so it's not going to be perfect every time. You got to really work at it. As you can see, there'll be some decal that didn't take, which is fine. But like right here, it didn't adhere as well as what I wanted it to. So when that happens, what I normally do, and luckily it happens, so I can show you my method. What I do, <clears throat> I'm not going to peel the whole decal off. What I'm going to do is grab a paintbrush and I'm going to grab a little bit of this Mod Podge. Get a little dab of my paintbrush. Throw it on the areas that didn't really adhere put it back on there same thing with this right here and what the Mod Podge will do is finish the bonding process so it should be what we need to <clears throat> finish everything up so like I said this is just a basic process that you have to practice on over and over again it's by far not perfect by any means but we'll let this sit again for about an hour and then we'll uh, debond the decal and we'll see what the final product looks like and then I'll go over some final thoughts okay so we're back and I've let the uh, Mod Podge and the decal set up a little bit so I 
kind of already started to peel it back a little bit and you can see how the uh, the Mod Podge pulled the decal off the paper. Same thing here. So there's your decal. This here stayed on a little bit, but I can take a black Sharpie and kind of just touch that up. Um, it's not a perfect technique by any means. The, be the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, that's no lie. Um, this was just a real quick tutorial by me. <clears throat> so the pros to it are you can create a lot of different custom decals um, using whatever fonts. Obviously, since I use the sandbox fonts, I have uh, access to some pretty unique uh, designs. You're only limited by imagination. Um, I would always recommend using the distress font over the regular font just because if you screw it up, the distress font looks more natural. You can make all different sizes of decals. Um, like I said, you're limited by your imagination. <clears throat> the cons, from what I've discovered, you can basically only do black decals. Um, I haven't really messed with any other colors very much on my laser printer. And I know if I do use them, they don't transfer to like darker colored items or whatnot. So you're kind of limited in the color you can use, but um, that's not a bad thing. Uh, the decals are semi-permanent. You can remove them with like a scotch pad or whatever, and a little bit of elbow, elbow grease. Might scuff the paint on what you're trying to remove, but you can remove it. Um, Again, also, you can run into issues with bonding and whatnot. But at the end of the day, if you've ever paid for custom decals, it's not cheap because the designer assumes the responsibility of making that one decal just for you. So their time and energy goes into that, and they can be pretty pricey. Um, so this is a way if you just want to do your own customs like I do for these fuel drums and some of my other projects you've seen on here. Um, this is the best way for me to do it. It's just a scrapbooking technique that I took and transferred over to uh, customizing G.I. Joe items. So it's pretty basic. It works great when it works. When it doesn't work, it looks okay. It can always look even worse just depending on how how much time you put into it so I would suggest trying this and uh, practicing before you do anything and when when you start to do it you know take your time and follow all the steps and that's basically how I make my custom decals it's a lot of work but then again you know customizing is a lot of work it's not like you're pulling stuff out of your butt daily. I mean, it takes time. It takes effort and thought and whatnot. So I um, appreciate you guys tuning in to this. Um, you can check out my customs on Instagram. Uh, I have jshear74 as my personal account. I have skunk underscore works74 as my account I post most toys to. And I also have a site called Toys in Brews, T-O-Y-S-N-B-R-E-W-S. -E and that's where I post pictures of some of my unique action figures along with the beers I enjoy. So I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Like and subscribe to the page. Share this. Um, practice and post some of your customs. Cheers.